Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig. This is our exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Your opportunity to catch up on what's going on with the forecast in the Mid-South area or wherever you may happen to be at this point. If you can't stick around for the whole thing, that's cool. Again, just take a look down toward the blue bar at the bottom of your screen, the forecast scrolling on by there. Or if you want to check out things, all you have to do is go to wrg.com slash weather for the updated forecast, 7 to 10 day pollen and allergy information, severe weather threats, forecast data, all that available there. Questions about what we do here, again, please let me know. We're on all sorts of social media, so you can also send me an email at austin.onic at wreg.com. It's a warm evening in the Mid-South area, and things are going to be decently quiet for quite some time. We'll take a look at the extended forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Tropics as well, the Almanac page, some of our live cams out there. Again, drop your location into the comments section. Let's see city, state, and especially if you've got any weather reports out there, temperature, wind speed, sky condition, whatever you've got out there. Let's see what's going on in your neck of the woods, and we'll show you a little bit more about what's going on from downtown Memphis for tonight. Thank you for joining us, and let's go ahead and head on and see what we've got here for tonight. Before we get too far along, 91 degrees, again, just above our average for 88 at this time of the year. Still about a 16-inch surplus for rainfall, so doing very nicely on the rain. No wildfire threat across the Mid-South. Again, looking pretty good there. Still some smoke from fires out there of fields burning across parts of Arkansas, so you may detect some of that going on out there. 76, our low temperature this morning in Memphis, average of about 68 degrees and nothing in the way of precipitation for today. From the Ole Miss campus, busy place tonight with Vaught-Hemingway Stadium lit up quite nicely and looking at dry conditions into and around the area of Ole Miss for this evening. So looking again at some pretty common uh, factors for tonight. On the warm side, humidity getting up there, 81 degrees at the Oxford Airport and clear skies reported across the area with a light northerly breeze. From Germantown, the City Hall camera looking back to the west. Opposite side of this camera is where the Germantown Festival is going on and so far no problems with visibility here either. Poplar Pike traffic right around the area of Germantown Road. No visibility problems and looking good all the way out to downtown Memphis on the horizon. Clear skies and 84 degrees at City Hall in Germantown. A little farther to the west, downtown Memphis on our Hilton East Memphis camera. Towers of Poplar and Mendenhall, downtown Memphis. Poplar and Mendenhall lights down there looking pretty good. Shelby Farms Park. If you have the opportunity to get out for tonight and want to see some stars through the telescope, the Memphis Astronomical Society is holding their free public viewing event right now through the rest of the evening until whenever they decide to pack up. They're at parking area P5 right off of Walnut Grove Road. So if you're in town and you'd like to know more, Again, check our websites for more details about that. And tomorrow night, if you're in Oxford, the Kennan Observatory will be holding a public viewing session as well on the Ole Miss campus. We'll talk about that again coming up a little bit later on. Sheree Sunshine, West Memphis, 70 degrees and winds high of 15 miles per hour. Okay, cool. Thank you very much for uh, that weather report. Everybody else tuning in. Uh, for this morning, or this evening, I should say, Tina Allensworth from Marion, Arkansas. Marshall Allen, hope I'm saying that right, from Cordova. Conway, Maxfield, Sheila Burton, welcome to the show at this point in time. Marion Huey Taylor, like the, a lot of the rest of us, rather tired of summertime temperatures and wants to bring on November. Can't argue with that for right now. Grady Bennett, 82 and calm winds in Berclair. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, car washing, that was probably a very good idea. I would guess the car washes out there are a little busy. Satellite radar composite is showing, again, a lot more activity going on well back to our north with kind of a weak system passing on through here. Most of the energy at this time is going straight across the country, so it's not going to be affecting us here in the Mid-South area. Storm Tracker 3S radar, complete and total clean sweep at this time, so little if anything to talk about in the Mid-South for right now. Still pretty warm out there. University of Memphis Earth Sciences, 84 degrees on live real-time weather net 3, 86 at Memphis International Airport. One of the cooler numbers right now, 78 degrees at Arkansas State in Jonesboro. Winds mainly north-northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour right there. Cassandra Summer, Somerville, thank you very much, from Covington, Tennessee. 
a little bit farther out of town, Mark Watkins from Augusta, Georgia. Thanks for joining us from out there. Uh, Norma Holden from Virginia now. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot for dropping on by from Virginia there. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us, Will Kennedy from Winona. All I know is it's hot, ready for winter. Can't argue with that right now. 65, John Womble in Flint, Michigan. That sounds pretty nice as well. Thanks a lot for some knowing there's some cooler weather at this point in time. Rest of the forecast into tonight, again, a light northeasterly breeze coming on through. Now, when you have a stable and dry atmosphere, the computer models sometimes get a little over eager in putting on chances of rainfall. So you're going to see some green popping up here, but no chance of anything, in my opinion, of anything happening tomorrow when it comes to anything involving showers. Now back to our north, St. Louis, Kansas City, Columbia, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa. You might see some stuff if you're heading that way, but really just not that much going on. And that'll continue. Most of what we're going to see here is going to be just cloud cover. Really doubt we're going to be seeing much of anything in the way of rain for the next, say, about week or so, if everything holds for right now. But we'll see how well that goes. Big weather story tomorrow, again, is going to be some very warm temperatures. Could be in the high 90s south of I-40 in parts of Mississippi and eastern Arkansas, so not exactly looking at anything in the way of cooler weather for the time being. So not really seeing it too much of anything else out there for the time being. So Felicia Williams, hope I'm saying that right, from Tunica. Welcome to the show. Walnut, Mississippi, Faye Bryant uh, from Memphis itself. Alicia Pitts, welcome to the show right there. Waterford, Mississippi, Penny Leopard, welcome to the show, and 80 degrees right now. Thank you very much for that one. And Jeffrey Griffiths from Walls, Mississippi, 81, and clear skies. Thank you very much there. All right, rest of the forecast looks like this. Tomorrow, after a relatively mild start to the day, numbers again back in the lower 90s and not seeing too much in the way of relief anytime soon where it comes to these temperatures. Matter of fact, on Monday, we're going to be looking at some pretty hot conditions out there for after-school activities, looking toward Friday night football practice for the rest of the week, and also marching band practice right on into Tuesday. We're just not really seeing too much of anything out there that's going to help us out with anything involving the less hot conditions across the area. So kids walking home from school, uh, anybody out there doing yard work or anything else like that, definitely want to make certain you're taking care of yourself and drinking back that water that your body sweats away. So keep that in mind. Now, over the next several days toward the end of the week, best chance of anything involving rainfall. Friday night, right around Friday night football, maybe. Could be some showers and thunderstorms there. And then toward about Saturday, looking at a slight, a very slight chance of some showers and some thunderstorms popping up. Now, if everything holds, again, maybe a bit of a, bit of a warm-up by next Sunday. But then... And again, this is still very far in the future, so a lot of things can change. Some signs right now, maybe, of a bit of a downturn on the temperatures as we go into the third week of September. Now, again, whether or not we make it to that point or not, we're still far enough away to where a lot of things can change in the atmosphere. It looks nice, and here's hoping that it stays that way. But as for right now, we will keep you updated on that. So keep it tuned to the weather experts for uh, more and Importantly, again, what's going to be changing out there, and if there's any interference from the tropics out there, that, again, is something we're hoping doesn't happen, but, again, is possible at this time of the year. Logan Ward usually cools down during the week of the Mid-South Fair. Here's hoping that happens, but unfortunately, I don't know if that's going to be happening for right now, right for the time being. Josh Womble, any rainfall? That's about as good as it gets, and it may be, again, by... Uh, the third week of September could be a slight chance of a shower, but chances right now, confidence is not high, to say the least, on that one for the time being. Looking out into the area around Nova Scotia, it's now called a post-tropical cyclone. It is still at hurricane force winds. Dorian is still at 100 miles per hour as it rolls over Nova Scotia tonight. Now, a couple of things on this. The good news is it's well out of the United States problem. Canada getting hit pretty hard by this one in the area of the Canadian Maritimes, and it is heading into cooler water. The colors you see on here, sea surface temperatures, red again showing very warm water, back through yellow, green, and blue. That's the colder waters of the North Atlantic, and that's where the storm is heading into. So as it goes that direction, it's going to start losing power, but this thing is still showing a lot 
of good opportunities of holding together at this time. Matter of fact, by the time it gets into around Monday, this thing is going to be just south of Greenland in the northern Atlantic and still at post-tropical storm strength at about 50 mile per hour winds. Ultimately, this thing might make its way all the way over to around, say, Iceland, maybe even around the British Isles, depending on what happens. So again, we may not see the last of this for a while. This storm has lasted quite some time over the last couple of weeks, but fortunately heading out of the picture for right now. Good news at this point in time, heading down to, say, the Gulf of Mexico, Florida for a late summer, maybe a bit of a school break going on for right now. Nothing going on in the Gulf of Mexico. Last week we had Fernand, now just a collection of showers and clouds over parts of Mexico, and not much left of that. Dorian, again, making its way up into the northern Atlantic and well back out to the east of that. Gabrielle is a tropical storm, winds of 50 miles per hour. This one also expected to curve back to the east and might be a problem by late this next week for Britain and Ireland as well. So we could see something out of that. What's the next one to watch? Right now, it's this one off the African coast. It doesn't look like much, just an area of low pressure for right now, but National Hurricane Center puts the chances of this development as about 50%. So there is something, again, to keep an eye on over the next few days. We are right before, we're about three days away from the peak of hurricane season that happens September 10th. So we are getting there, but we still have a lot of the season to go. We're only at the halfway point. So these things need to be watched very carefully. So keep it tuned again to the weather experts and we'll keep you updated on that. If you'd like to read a great book regarding the tropics and what happened a long time ago, before even radio was around, this is an excellent book to take a look at. And we're coming up on the 119th anniversary of what is called the 1900 storm or the Galveston Hurricane. If you've never heard about this, if you've never read about this, this was the worst weather disaster ever for America. This was the, again, killer storm back in around the turn of the last century, last, last century, I guess you should say. Eric Larson writing this amazing book, some chilling information on this about what happened and especially the aftermath. And if you'd like to catch up on what that is all about and some of the passages out of that, again, stick tuned to my social media pages and we'll keep you updated. Really great read to keep up to date on what we used to know and unfortunately what happened when we didn't know what was going on. The estimates of around six to 12,000 casualties from that storm. It was never accurately measured, unfortunately, but a good lesson to prepare for future disasters and to see what may happen there. All right, one more check of the forecast for tonight. Things are, again, quiet. They are dry. They are decently warm, so not really seeing too much of any major concerns out there for the overnight uh, period of time for the as of right now looking overnight. So questions at this point in time about the forecast seem to be pretty quiet for the time being at this point, but still seeing, again, nothing in the way of cloud cover. And, again, looking at pretty calm conditions for now. Still pretty warm as we go into tomorrow. Coming up, as we go into tomorrow, the National Weather Service has posted their next Skywarn Spotter training meetings, and you can attend those and be the eyes and ears of the National Weather Service. We'll talk about that. We also, again, have the astronomical viewing session at Ole Miss at Kennan Observatory tomorrow night. Don't forget about the Memphis Astronomical Society. They're out at Shelby Farms right now at parking area P5 right off of Walnut Grove if you'd like to do some amateur stargazing for this evening. Again, questions, concerns, ideas, anything about what you want to see on here, let me know. Drop me a line at austin.onic at wreg.com. I'd love to hear from you and to find out more about what you would like to see on here, more than just the forecast, more science information, more satellites, more almanac data, whatever. If that's what you want, we'll try to fit it in here. And again, we'd love to hear from you, but we can't do it unless you let us know. So give us a shout on that. Anything else, again, keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the forecast for the rest of the weekend. Be coming up on News Channel 3 at 10. Todd Demers will have your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak Sunday. And that starts bright and early at 6 a.m. on Sunday. That's it from downtown Memphis. Thanks for joining us on Weather Overtime for tonight. And stay tuned for more weather news and sports throughout the rest of the weekend on News Channel 3 on air and online.